But the thing is, without a hospital, with a full service hospital, this community dies. They should have privatized it years ago. Sure. It, it's something. It would be bad enough to lose the hospital, but it would be just as bad, if not worse, for everybody in the town of Messina if we don't get a grant to offset the pension fund. Yeah. Our taxes will go up unbelievable. Yeah. Can I, um, I'm going to get the camera because I'm TV. I got yeah. to get the sure. cameras this way. Hey, John. Hi, Charlie. to the section 127-3 of the general municipal law allows Mrs. Fenton an opportunity to be heard. Uh, there's no debating or answering questions. Uh, if you want to go into executive session at any point, you're more than uh, free to ask for that. We will accommodate you. And <coughs> Carol Fenton, resident of the town of Messina, Messina and current chairperson of the Messina Memorial Hospital Board of Managers. I am here in response to the town supervisor's letter of February 13, 2019, outlining his intention to remove me from my position on the Board of Managers. The reason for my removal, and I quote, is the failure to improve the financial condition of Messina Memorial and the failure to install a management team capable of leading the Cena Memorial without exposing the taxpayers of the town of Messina <coughs> to inordinate financial risk. Specifically, you have failed to exercise adequate control of the general superintendents and management of the Cena Memorial and of all matters relating to the government, discipline, 
contracts, and the fiscal concerns thereof. Further, you have failed to maintain an effective inspection of said hospital and keep yourself informed of the affairs and management thereof." End quote. In terms of the timeline and to give context to my response, I was appointed to the Board of Managers in February of 2017 and have been an active <coughs> member since that time, participating on numerous hospital committees. I was nominated and elected as chairperson at a 5 p.m. meeting of the Board of Managers on Tuesday, February 5th, following the removal of Susan Beller on January 23rd, 2019. Sue Beller was nominated as chairperson December 17th, following your refusal to reappoint then Chairman Scott Wilson after his term on the board expired on December 31st, 2018. Sue Beller took over the first of the year. In the last two months, you have appointed six new members to the board. My response to the charges are as follows. As to the charge of failing to improve the financial condition of the hospital, I would submit that doing so in eight days would be a tall order for most individuals. To claim that I haven't done so in eight days is both unfair and unrealistic. As you are aware, there are numerous reasons our hospital is facing financial constraints. Many small community co hospitals are facing the same. That is the reason we are working towards an affiliation with a larger hospital network. As to the charge of failure to install a management team capable of leading Messina Memorial without exposing the taxpayers of the town of Messina to inordinate financial risk. On June 19, 2018, an article in the Watertown Daily Times noted the surprise resignation of Messina Memorial Hospital's CEO. I will not go into the details of the how or why of Mr. Willenbin's resignation. The article, however, goes on to say that Ann Gilpin was hired as interim chief executive officer, noting that Mr. O'Shaughnessy stated that it will be a temporary position. Quote, we talked to her. She has excellent credentials and comes highly rated. She was going to be perfect for that two-month period we need her, O'Shaughnessy said. New York General Municipal Law Section 128 states the Board of Managers shall appoint a superintendent of the hospital who shall not be a member of the Board of Managers and who shall hold office at the pleasure of said board. However, Ann Gilpin was hired by the town of Messina with no input or knowledge of the Board of Managers. The board was forced to appoint Ann Gilpin as, following Mr. Willenbin's resignation, MMH was without a CEO and could not operate without one. Ann Gilpin was a very capable CEO during her short tenure. She assisted the Board of Managers in locating Chuck Giganto, who is currently serving as interim president, president and chief executive officer since August of 2018. He has been a tremendous asset to this hospital. The rest of the Messina Memorial Hospital management team has been there for many years and are some of the brightest, most dedicated individuals I have ever worked with. To infer otherwise is insulting to them. As to the charge that I failed to exercise adequate control of the general superintendents and management of Messina Memorial, and of all matters relating to the government, discipline, contracts, and fiscal concerns thereof, and that I have failed to maintain an effective inspection of said hospital and keep myself informed of the affairs and management thereof. During my eight days as chair, and on a daily basis, I met with, emailed, and spoke on the phone with not only the CEO, but other hospital management staff and board members as well. Did I schedule or conduct any inspections of the hospital in those eight days? No, I did not. Did I keep myself informed of the affairs and management of the hospital to the extent that I could in eight days? Absolutely. If you have information to the contrary, please let me know. Excuse me. 
in late December of 2018, you called me at home and informed me you were calling various board members and asking for their resignation if they could not, quote, support you. I was stunned and disappointed to receive a call of this nature. You have stated many times that the town supervisor has the statutory right to remove board members. You threatened to do so at the June 2018 Board of Managers meeting following the resignation of Bob Wellenden. Several board members expressed concern and anger at this threat, and those were communicated to you by then-Chair Scott Wilson. This resulted in a letter dated July 23, 2018 from you as Town Supervisor to Mr. Wilson that was ultimately shared with the rest of the Board of Manager members. The letter said, quote, I have been asked to send this correspondence on behalf of the Town Board of the Town of Messina. It is the Town Board's intention to allow the Messina Memorial Hospital Board to manage the operations of the Messina Memorial Hospital as required by General Municipal Law of the State of New York. I want to again express my appreciation and that of the entire Town of Messina Board for the work you and the MMH Board do for the Town of Messina." End quote. <coughs> Obviously a lot has changed between July and today. An article in Monday's Watertown Times states Mr. O'Shaughnessy said he is reviewing the performance of every board member. At this point, I've just been reviewing it on a case-by-case -case basis. Mainly, we are just looking at each one to see if they need to be removed, Mr. O'Shaughnessy said. My first rhetorical question to you is, who is the we that you refer to? You have said many times you have the sole statutory authority to remove board members. It is curious that you and some other unnamed person is reviewing the performance of every board member. My second rhetorical question would be, what are the performance standards you are using in your performance review? The standards I've used while on the board were the hospital town bylaws outlining the duties and responsibilities of board members, which reflects what is in the New York State General Municipal Law. Neither of these documents contain anything that says you have to follow the wishes of the town supervisor. <coughs> it is apparent that any board member that does not agree with you needs to be removed. This is not how public boards are intended to operate. <coughs> you have publicly and privately stated that you have no idea why the board passed a resolution to pursue affiliation with Kraus Claxton Hepburn. The Messina Memorial Physicians had expressed a similar sentiment and suggested a meeting with all parties so presentations could be made, questions asked and answered. At a town council meeting held here January 16th, several hospital employees and members of the public expressed similar sentiments. In order to be responsive to what was, in my mind, a valid request, I reached out to both potential affiliates and emailed you that I had done so and that I would be coordinating, coordinating dates, hopefully in early March. I truly believe this is what you and the town council desired. Unfortunately, I was mistaken as later that day I received your email termination letter. To the rest of the town council members, although the town supervisor has the right to appoint and remove board members, you have a vote in everything else, including the asset transfer agreement. I challenge you to make a motion tonight to press for more information, as I was trying to do, so you can make a reasoned, informed decision on the asset transfer agreement. You have a vote. Use it. In conclusion, Mr. O'Shaughnessy, you publicly admitted in the media that you were packing the board. I found that to be an interesting use of terminology. 
So I googled the definition and found on dictionary.com when used as a verb as it was in this case, it means to fill a legislative body committee with one's own supporters. It is very apparent that that is your ultimate intention. Thank you for the opportunity to respond to my pro proposed removal. I hope you will reconsider <coughs> and allow me to remain as chair of the Messina Memorial Board of Managers. of and factoring into the decision the following the September 18 financials the October 2018 financials November 2018 financials the December 2018 financials and the January 9 2019 financials as well as the 215 216 audited financials of the Sina Memorial Hospital along with the unaudited for 2017 and 2018. And I am also taking notice of your decision, your position as a member of the Board of Managers for 2017 and 18. Uh, I'm going to reserve decision on the. I understand I have the right to have witnesses on my speak on you my do. behalf. Yes. Okay, I have three. Um, Joe Gray, Susan Beller, and Charlie R Romine. Great. <coughs> Let me go while my throat is still working here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, again, Sue Beller, in support of MMH volunteer Carol Fenton. Carol has faithfully worked as a board of manager, attending and actively participating in several committees adhering to the bylaws with all corresponding responsibilities and leadership and management, which was her job description when appointed by Supervisor Joe Gray. While Carol dedicated hundreds of hours to work voluntarily for the benefit of MMH, it is also important to say that another now former Board of Manager, Dave McLennan, was earnest and sincere in his dedication and commitment to thousands of hours over his 17 years in his efforts to keep MMH a viable, full-service hospital. When the current supervisor, Steve O'Shaughnessy, served as liaison, you only attended three board meetings in all of 2016, and only two meetings in all of 2017. Yet that was part of your job elected as a, and, say, and paid for by the town taxpayers. Only when you became supervisor, you did attend 11 of 12 board meetings in 2018. In your blatant disregard, for board of managers who dared exercise free speech or vote for an affiliation not to your choice, you removed hardworking volunteers, Carol, Dave, and myself, who obviously have more commitment to keeping MMH a full service hospital. As a result, you have also destroyed a planned process of board of managers' yearly rotations and now have added members, some who have shown a bias or a disgruntled behavior toward MMH, mm -hmm. but who will support you and your choice of affiliation that will condense our community hospital. By the way, it is pretty obvious to many in our community that Dr. Moreska has a potential conflict of interest serving on our board when he himself is chief medical officer of St. Lawrence Health and Potsdam Hospital. So, you, Steve, have taken ownership of removing valuable board members, and for the record, through your actions, you alone have taken full ownership and full responsibility of the future of MMH, which means if MMH is not maintained, 
as a full service hospital, it may result in a loss of services and jobs. Thank you. I'm sure people can hear me. See when people Hi. can talk to me after they want. Anyway. Joe? Joe, you want to come Sure, I can take it. Excuse me if I sit back now. My legs aren't as good as they used to be back in the day. As stated earlier, I appointed uh, Carol Fenton to the Hospital Board of Managers uh, in 2017. Um, she is, has a tremendous record as a professional, a professional woman who has uh, held the uh, positions of esteem in our community, has re retired from the St. Lawrence Seaway Development Corporation, um, and uh, obviously has a lot of professional experience to bring to the board. One of the things I said to her was, and what I said to everyone that I've appointed to the board, I appointed to the board was, I don't want you to be a yes person. I want you to speak your mind, do your research, and um, weigh in. Don't just sit there and nod your head. And the people that I've appointed, I don't think any of them have done that. And I'm very proud of that and very pleased with that. Your dismissal of Carol Fenton was unfounded and capricious. In total, you have dismissed three members of the MMH board, refused to appoint a fourth, and the disruption and chaos created by you and Councilman Carbone caused the fifth member to resign. Additionally, the financial crisis and fiscal emergency you and Carbone manufactured has further destabilized our hospital. We're all this doom and gloom, how we're going to collapse, and oh my God, we're out of money, and oh, we can't make payroll, and we're just foolishness. It has caused unnecessary strife and stress for MMH employees and has upset our community. You claim Mrs. Fenton's, quote, removal was prompted by a failure to improve financial conditions of MMH and failure to install a management team capable of leading MMH. But you, sir, are the one responsible for terminating Mr. Wallabin, or whatever the proper term is. I call it terminating. He probably doesn't like that term. He resigned. But uh, bringing in a replacement at nearly twice his salary, and then firing the attorney who helped you orchestrate all of this foolishness. If your reasons are truthfully stated and you really believe them, then you should not have appointed, reappointed Mrs. Perez to the hospital's board of managers, and you should immediately dismiss the remainder of the board who have been in office for more than two months. Obviously, they're all at fault, too. Why does it all fall on the few people you've dumped? Melanie Cunningham should have never been appointed to, to the uh, Messina Town Council. She was on the hospital board. She apparently failed to take care of the problems as well. So she certainly shouldn't be on the town board, but you guys appointed her to that position. In fact, all the town council should resign because they all failed to address the problem at the hospital. If things were that bad, why don't you all step down as well? Like Lastly, you were a town council liaison to the hospital board for two years prior to becoming supervisor and did nothing to quote unquote improve financial conditions of MMH. Then, as town supervisor for more than a year, you still did not improve financial conditions of MMH. It would seem the only right and just action for you to take is to resign as supervisor and let the board of the hospital board of managers perform its duties to establish policies to allow MMH to carry out its mission to provide quality health care in the Seaway Valley. Before you resign, however, please reappoint Mrs. Mrs. Fenton so she can get back to work. Thank you. taxpayer of the town of Messina, first, I have to do something that I didn't think I was going to. I have to commend you, Mr. O'Shaughnessy. You showed much more decorum and respect to Mrs. Fenton than you did to Sue Beller. 
I didn't see you texting anybody. Or is that because the person you were texting during her hearing was uh, at work? Now, I, was, I had more. I had to know I signed one you say. Yeah. Now, to begin with, I had more to say, but fortunately for me, uh, Carol and Sue already said that. But what I'd like to say is we, the community of Messina, have been failed by people. Not by Carol Fenton, Dave McLennan, Sue Beller, Scott Wilson, or Tina Buckley. They are heroines and heroes of our community. They give us their time and money to support us by doing the work we ask them to do. We have been failed by an autocratic town supervisor and four town council people who have not been our voice in a check and balance system in our community. What check and balance? It's disgraceful the way you gentlemen and that lady have conducted Amen. yourself to represent yeah. us. Now, either you have no opinion as, a, as town council people, which I've read in the paper, or you refuse or forget to return media calls. What's the matter, Sam? Your phone doesn't go both ways? Now, this meeting is a farce. No person should be allowed to be judge and jury. That's a system that should be changed. Before we do tonight, I just would like to read something. Before opening the floor for public comments, I just wanted to say a few words. As town supervisor, I am charged by statute with appointing and removing members of the Messina Memorial Hospital Board of Managers. Although I've consulted with the town board in the past, the statute that allows the creation of a town-owned hospital gives the supervisor the authority to appoint and remove hospital board members. <coughs> I wanted to state some of the facts that drew my decisions that we've talked about tonight. Uh, Messina Memorial Hospital has incurred multi-million dollar losses from operations over the last seven years, several years. 4.8 million loss in 2014 $7 million loss in 2015, $6.5 million loss in 2016, over $7 million projected for 2017, and over $5 million projected for 2018. The Cena Memorial Hospital is a public body and it must make contributions to New York State retirement system. The Cena Memorial has not been able to make their pension contributions required for 2018 and 2019. Five million dollars is due. If it's not paid by the hospital, all of the taxpayers in the town of Cena will shoulder this burden. In 2015, <coughs> December, the Messina Memorial hospital board was authorized by a resolution from the town board to begin the process of converting to a not-for-profit hospital subject to certain requirements including the creation of a successor pension plan with a negotiated bridge payment for the most affected employees satisfying the town that the town has been adequately compensated for its assets and relieved of all of its debts from the hospital and maintaining an overall employment at the new not-for-profit hospital at 345 FTEs and to grow its employment. 
to this day, the Board of Managers has not produced any such plan, affiliation, contract, or other document that would satisfy this, these criteria. The, the Board of Managers voted on December 19th to affiliate with Krauss Claxton. This vote was not based on any co contract or concrete proposal. The vote wasn't on the agenda for their de December 19th meeting, so the employees of the hospital and public could not hear of the decision. The vote was taken after the Board of Managers' executive session when the press and the town board liaisons were not present. The Board of Managers did not include the town board in this decision-making process, nor notify the town board that the vote was going to take place. The Board of Managers has expressed to the town board that they were relying on a grant from the State of New York to ease the transfer costs and the burden of the hospital debt on the town taxpayers. <laughs> Since then, the Board of Managers was informed that the Emma Messina Memorial Hospital is not getting the grant. As the town supervisor, I recognize the importance of Messina Memorial Hospital to this community and appreciate the work and the effort of the employees and the medical staff. I also appreciate the dedication of the Board of Managers, even if I disagree with them. I've wanted to work with the Board of Managers to come to a solution that would be best interest of the Messina Hospital and the taxpayers of the town. Despite these losses, despite the inability to make the pension payments, and despite the lack of a plan that satisfied the criteria that set forth by the town board, despite the vote done without consultation with the town board, in an attempt to work with the Board of Managers, I called three special meetings, joint meetings, for January 31st, February 6th, <coughs> February 13th, and invited the Board of Managers so that path forward could be discussed. However, a quorum of the Board of Managers did not attend any of the three meetings, including Mrs. Fenton and Mr. McLennan and committed to the future of Messina Memorial Hospital and will commit to some more support the Board of Manager members who are willing and able to work with the town board to keep the hospital open, viable, and vibrant. So with that, does anybody have anything to say? Young would you please stand in front of the... I'd be happy to. <laughs> I'm not really soft and cuddly to follow. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about a dumpster fire. What constitutes a dumpster fire depends really on who's watching. But to paraphrase the late Supreme Court Justice Potter Stewart, you know it when you see it. Webster's, it turns out, back in 2018, actually added it to their dictionary. And they defined it as such. An utterly calamitous or mismanaged situation or occurrence. A disaster. What the Messina Town Board has done, indeed continues to do now, regarding the future of Messina Memorial Hospital, is simply put, a dumpster <coughs> fire. Early this month, a respected reporter in the community approached the four of you council persons, looking for your input, your thoughts, and your opinions on the way the town supervisor has handled the situation of MMH. Your answers, or more specifically, lack thereof, bring shame upon the community, the situation, and yourselves. Mr. Miller, your statement that you didn't have a right to, com to comment is a cop-out. You're in civil. You're a member of this community, sir. You're an elected official, and you owe it to the people who elected you, including your brother firefighters, to tell the people your opinion. It's the reason, after all, you were elected to office, Tom, because we, the people of this community, trust you to speak for us. You are not speaking for us, Tom. Mr. Nicola. You've taught generations of students history at Messina Central, and you've served this community for many, many years, and for that I thank you. I think many people in the room would as well. The people who have made you a councilman, myself included, did so because they believed they were electing a representative to the board that would make informed decisions, who would provide the leadership the town of Messina needs, the sort of leadership that you yourself instilled in many of those students that you taught at Messina Central. 
You are not leading us, Al. Ms. Cunningham, you served the Messina Hospital Board prior to being named to the town board of Messina. If anyone on the town board knows what unique problems are facing that hospital, I'd like to think that it's you. However, I'll remind you that your responsibility to the community as a member of the town board means that if a reporter reaches out to you for a comment on what is quite simply probably the single most important issue that has faced the board as a whole during your time on it, you have a responsibility to reach out. If he can't reach you when he calls for a comment, can the constituency expect the same sort of service? You are not answering us, Melanie. Mr. Carbone, you are a son of Messina, as I am, born and raised, as are many of us here this evening. Your father served this town with pride as a municipal employee for many, many years. And you've had successes yourself here and working with one of the larger employers in the community at NIPA. Yet, like Ms. Cunningham, you couldn't even be bothered giving a comment on the issue when you were asked for it. Instead, we're treated with outbursts, angry slapping of desks, and then given a half-hearted apology, claiming a lack of sleep. You are not making us proud, Sam. In fact, I would go so far as to suggest a very simple answer to your lack of sleep. Resign your position on the board. I'm sure that you'd have much more time then. I come to you in your heavy-handed tactics with members of the hospital board. And I'd like to pause for just a moment and thank Carol and Steve and Dave and Scott and Tina for their service to that hospital board. Because how they were treated was reprehensible. There is simply no other word for it. If the situation before us is a dumpster fire, you are the propane torch that lit this off. Going at least as far back as December of last year with your refusal to reappoint Scott Wilson, a finance guy from way back. By your own admission, you're packing the board. This is from the February 14th broadcast on WWNY. I am packing the board. I want people that will be responsible, will take action, will make this hospital work to make the hospital sustainable. We the people of this community, not the you people, that you derisively referred to in this forum just a month ago, but the people that elected you town supervisor, believing you were a man who would ensure the will of the people and counted on your fair and partial leadership, we are sick and we are tired of the treatment of former members of the hospital board. Instead, it seems that you're working towards your own ends, serving your own interests above that of the hospital board, the town board or the people of the town. What are you hiding, Steve? You're the closest that Messina's got to a Faustian villain. Who are you answering to if not these people in this room and beyond? Your actions speak louder than whatever words you might want to give us on the issue. You can read us line after line, it doesn't matter. What you are doing speaks volumes. The town of Messina is sick of watching and smelling this dumpster fire. In a statement made in January, you stated, quote, it's important that both the town board and the board of managers listen to the medical staff in Messina. That should encourage the board of managers to come and work with the town of Messina to come up with an evaluation <coughs> and figure out which way we should go. <coughs> on January 11th, Watertown Daily Times. Yet, Dr. Tang stood here last month, where I'm standing, reminding you that partnering with CPH and SLHS would be a mistake, and clearly, you're, not, you're only interested in listening to medical staff that, that share your opinion and your view on the subject, as with hospital board members. Apparently, somebody's got some kind of control or thrall over you. Perhaps there's a vested interest, a conflict, maybe, amongst you and somebody that would make you want to go in a direction that seems to defy logic and reason. Joe Gray served as town supervisor for eight years and has been involved in the world of politics much longer than I have. I don't like this. He doesn't need my defense of his position or actions, but as a Navy vet, as a member of this community, the state of the country, I'll stand with Joe and defend the right that he has to say stuff. So when, he, when I see comments on WWNY TV just two days ago, his posts and what he's putting out on social media is bad for the community? 
I don't think it's doing anything to help the problem. This is your own quote, your own quote, your own words. I got news, Steve. Okay. Read the papers. The problem is your own. This is your own creation. You've started this dumpster fire. And every day, every week, every person that summarily kicked off the board, you show the electorate of Messina your contempt for them and your disqualification for the position you hold. In short, this community has no confidence in either you, Mr. O'Shaughnessy, you, Councilwoman Cunningham, or the three of you, Councilmen. Do the right thing. Step aside. secret vote that the hospital board had wanting, choosing to affiliate with Krauss. Where and when did the secret vote obviously happen to go with CPH? Mm -hmm. My next question, it's in the rumor mill that Chuck is next. Do you appoint the next CEO or does our hospital board that you stack, meaning pretty much the same person? So. Why do we even have a hospital board if you just want to call the shots? And when did that vote happen, other than the election where even I myself voted for you? I wish back then you had said to me, I said, I don't want that position. But vote for me anyway because I got your back. Now we're supposed to trust you. When you said you did not want that position, you were thrown into it. Just explain to us, please, if your choice is CPH, and you alone were the judge and jury of that decision too, how that is good for us. Make us swallow that pill. It's not good for us. We know that. You obviously see it different. I'm not on the board. We'll never sit on that board. Because I don't, I, we don't think the same. But if you know something we don't know, please say it. You said half the jobs will be gone. Sam, you said that. Mm -hmm. You said it's a takeover. Yeah. How is that okay? Mm -hmm. You're making the decision. Explain it to us. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll sit down and shut up. But until then, <coughs> this is our house. This is our house. Yes. 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 How come you don't answer any of these questions when they're being yeah. asked? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm Elder Messina. I'm going to expand on two points. First, I'm going to expand on what Joe there said. Who owns the hospital? Taxpayers of the town of the state? Taxpayers. That's us. Okay. That's us. That's us. That's us. That's us. So our voice is here. What do we say? Do we oh, want oh. our hospital to affiliate with what? Class Brown. 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 Yep. Who the do we want as our board of managers? Let's go to the reasoning that you use to fire these fine people. <coughs> Who is the chief fiscal officer of this town? I. You are. You've been in office in that chair since when? A year. A year. We'll go, we'll go 14 months because this is now February. Prior to that, where did you sit? Over there. Over there? You weren't on the town council at all? Yes. Okay. So using using you as chief financial officer who has ultimate fiscal responsibility for the hospital that the town owns and that you're calling in their past history going back to 2015, I'll call in your past history. Okay. You're the chief fiscal officer. You have failed to fix the financial situation of the hospital. You have failed to install a management team. Appropriate. They had 
three days, five days, eight days, Dave McCullough, no days, in any authoritative fashion to make that happen, you are double standard. You need to step down using your own rules and criteria. Your own yeah. criteria. <laughs> now, I'm going to the fact that the problem with this board is it is a board of one. It is not a town board. It is a board of one. Me, myself, I. Yeah, single board. Stevie the Eibach. That's where it's going to go. And you're going to hear that a lot from me in the future. You all have a responsibility in our town code to share equal power. He is one of five invested with equal power. That's what your book says. You guys, in your book, the next paragraph says that same thing. You are one of five of equal power. Mm -hmm. You need to speak up because there's another paragraph in there that says your greatest responsibility to this 